This is the adjustable circuit board holder from my last Amazon order, my last unboxing. I put that on Hill or Stream, I believe, instead of uh, Hill's Workbench for a change. It wasn't all electronic items, it was more or less mechanical items. Probably still could have gone here, but... Anyway, I get almost 8.5 inches, or 215 millimeters, and that's with the unit with like a half inch indentation on each end here, over the bar, but that's still pretty stable. Little stanchions here. The stanchions are just plastic. And these little locks and stuff are kind of cheaply made. So it's no great piece of quality. I like the base. It's nice and sturdy and stable. Nice aluminum. Nice feet. Another TDA 7293 board. And these were only for something at, uh, I'll have to look at the thing. It was three for 12 something. And uh, I thought they were kits, just like the other ones I've been receiving. And unfortunately, much to my disgust, they're not kits. I was wondering if I could mod the solder on this board, if I could use these, this vise. And I was thinking maybe I could do it like this. Let's see if it'll work. I can tighten up the little bottom one. Because there's no clearance on the edges. You know, there's no clearance on either pair of edges. So I guess I could rotate it like this, kind of. Oh, I already tightened these up. I shouldn't tighten them up. Yeah, obviously it's not going to work that well. Of course, you could always grip the end of the board, I guess. It'd be the way to go, I guess. Let's grip them like this. Real time fidgeting. Yeah, that would kind of work. So, they're not going to be universal fit for everything. They're going to be real nice in some situations and just a misfit in others, I'm afraid. Then i got to loosen these to pivot it. I guess that could be kind of workable. Yeah, you could still work that. Remember the great wire wound thing where you had a little tool that would twist your wire around a post? This has got a little bit of wire wind in it. I've already pulled two wires off. I guess I didn't have to solder anything. A pretty cheesy way to hook your transformer up. You know, it's a major power device. You're going to trust it to go through this stupid little wire wind and not get oxidized or anything else over the years. I, I never liked wire wound. I'm glad it's a trend that kind of went the way of the Etzel. So again, I originally wanted to get kits. I, I thought I was going to get the same boards I got in the last time, which were kits. And I believe I have a defective chips with those kits. Uh, pirated or uh, you know I read an interesting article on an eBay reseller of Chinese goods and he was talking about counterfeit chips and such and his main assertion was and I kind of believe him it would be very difficult for people to make a chip from scratch but what they do is they buy um, either rejects or most often they buy a lower chip number you know, they buy a chip that was meant to work in a 30 volt environment and label it as a chip that's meant to work in a 120 volt um, up to, you know, the 72, um, what is this chip, 7293, TDA, 7293? It's supposed to work at like 100 volts, and usually I see specs of 110, I've even seen 120 bandied about. And of course the ones I got from the other kit kind of cave in right about 27 volts across, you know, less than plus minus 15. It was already pulling current real heavy, although it did work. And I kind of suspect I'm going to get the same result out of these, but we'll see. These were too cheap to believe, and I'm not even going to put the full 120 or 110 or even the 100 volts on it. I'm going to put whatever this amp can do, which is going to be somewhat shy of that. Hoping to make these reach somehow. So I'm going to get these and this connector. These are the AC transformer connectors. Because this board's got a bridge rectifier on it already. That's why it's got somewhat bigger electrolytics. Although they're not really big enough. You know, for, 100, for a 100 watt amp, you know, 2200 mics is not anywhere near adequate. You would actually get a power increase like John demoed in one of his videos. By putting bigger caps on this board. 
At any rate, I'm not going to do a power test. I just want to, I'll just be amazed if it can survive this much voltage. If it does, then uh, maybe I'll have to arrange to give it the full voltage. But we'll do what we can do for today here. I've already put on an audio, uh, an RCA connector with two short pieces of resistor wires on it and trimmed short and screwed into the little binding post. This does have posts on all three sides. My kit only gave me this and one side. Oh, that other little kit I had. Where did that little devil go anyway? What a disaster that thing was. Of course, I started putting a socket in here, but I broke that up. This has got a nicer board, though. It's actually smaller. Of course, you'd expect it to be smaller because it uh, doesn't have the power supply circuit on it. This board's more... Uh, well, it's double-sided and all. I don't know if this board is double-sided. I guess it is. It's pretty much the same deal. But bigger, less densely packed. Alright, what will happen if I apply power to this $4 100 watt module? Yeah, right. So, let's try it. I, not... I should be getting music though. Why have I no music? Hmm. Alright, well I'm going to double check everything see if I can figure that out. It's not smoking or drawing current. That's a change from the other ones. I'm going to go all the way up. My total DC across both rails should be 1.4 times 75 volts. It's getting up there. Hmm. Didn't crash and burn at least, but no audio. Let me double check everything and come back. Let me get a reading here of voltage before I go any further. I lost one of my probes here. It'll be the same 75 volts at top, I'm pretty sure. Although now we got audio going. This is uh, working surprisingly well. I can probably take the bulb out of this circuit here. Plug this sucker right in. It does sound pretty clean. I'd like to see it on a scope. I'll also do some further testing. But it doesn't appear to have very much gain. So I don't know if it's going to work or not in my uh, desired situation here on the Yamaha. And that'd be a pretty tough project anyway because I have to work around all the protection circuit just kind of embedded into the amp Whoa. on the Yamaha here. It's uh, kind of ingrained in all the circuitry. It's not just going to be duck soup to separate the uh, old amp and put in some new amps. This guy's pretty warm. I'm sitting quiet now. I'm just letting it sit quiescent for a little bit, see if it returns to a more normal temperature, or if it keeps climbing. Yeah, she's a yeah, she's cooled down a tiny bit. I think that's about where she was. So she's warm, but not out of bounds. This heatsink's definitely undersized, you know. If you're really going to call it a 100 watt amp, you'd want to use this original heat sink, which it's going to be tough to do the way these are done, but I might think of something yet. It's difficult to get a voltage reading directly off these caps. This is a rail to rail. 
98 volts. My little player is, uh, MP3 player is charged up again. I'm going to see if I can get any more output from that. I wasn't able to drive the uh, unit very hard with the notebook. Netbook. Let's see how it goes with this guy. So this unit's working fairly well. It gets nice and hot. I put it in front of a fan right now. This heat sink, like I said, is undersized. I have it set up for 4 ohms now. It turns out my other speaker isn't burned out. One of my alligator clips is burned out. So right now it's hooked up to 4 ohms. And I'm going to try to find a track with a little more bass on it. Well, a momentary slip up while I was trying to get the other channel's input cable out of harm's way. It was sitting on the ground here. And I accidentally hit something on the PC board and uh, big hum and bang and blew my uh, latte eye pearl. This is about 10 years old. It's been a really good unit. It still lights up and works normally, but no audio output anymore now. That's going to be a big loss. This is my skiing uh, music player for skiing mostly. And it's been a good, of course I've got a decade out of it, so it's not all, it's not all lost. The battery life isn't what it used to be. So, I guess I can sour grapes it that way. Anywho, that's what I get for not building that preamp project yet. I need to do what John did and build a little test bench preamp for cases like this. But the amp held up well, it held up under duress. It's seeing almost 100 volts. So this chip is actually looks genuine and actually acts genuine. So I don't know what happened with the other kits I had, but neither one of those worked over about 30 volts. But this is taking the full Monty, pretty much anyway. Well, all that I can give it. I suppose I could boost a couple more volts off the uh, use of variac and boost mode, and I could probably itch it up to a little past 100 volts if I wanted. No, this is doing what I want it to do. I was clipping a little in the last. Thing, but I think I was clipping the eye pearl. Probably found a track loud enough to drive it. Well, so these modules work. Three for uh, a little over 12 bucks. Hell of a deal. Bang good.